Welcome to mindfor2.com. This is a collaborative mind mapping tool that allows children in your class or even teachers across year groups to plan out uh, investigations, stories, you name it, anything that requires stepped thinking or guided thinking. This will allow the group to stay on track. Now if I just keep my mouse here for a moment, you'll be, actually be able to see the styles of the mind maps going past on the little slideshow on the front page of the website. So you can see that they're kind of, um, kind of more to do with flow diagrams and that kind of stepped bubble that they talk about in, mo in modellearning.com. So I'm going to try and use the correct terminology, forgive me if I don't, the correct model learning um, terminology while I demo this. So I'm going to go in and launch Mind42 over here. You can see that I've signed in. If you haven't, si if you haven't signed up, do so. So you need your email open um, and go and make a username. It's free, it's very simple. All it, all it asks for is your email address and a username and a password. And that's pretty much it. So I'm going to go and open up Mind42. And you can see that I've got a couple here open already, or the ones that I've made. So I'm going to click on ICT and visual learning tools, or visual tools. And I've got a very simple mind map here that's just ready to, that's just ready started. So I've gone into the left hand side over here, and you can see that there are various icons next to the shelves and the cupboards. I, I think this is, this is the room, this is the cupboard, and is this the shelf? I I get mixed up when I'm working that way. Uh, so I'll go from this room and maybe I want my groups and my, my teachers and my, whoever to think in a particular way and I want them to go from either left to right and so I can pop a number next to these labels. So if I click on here, if I click on the star then I can add all these here and you can see that these ones will and they will cycle through these these, these colours. You can see that I've got one over here that says three quarters full. And that might be a little reminder for either the children in my group or the teachers that this actually takes a little bit longer than it than it, it should. So this is a game, so that the children might be enticed to play that a little longer than they should. Next to the other labels, maybe this in this shelf here are link icons. So this Persuasive Games uh, title has a link attached to it so it means I can go and click on this and I can go and play the Killer Flu game because I'm talking about game design or that kind of thing in Key Stage 2. Over here the elephant in the room is this picture. So you can add images just by clicking on the link and then you can go and drop in the URL. If you don't know what a URL is, it's just the basic address for an image that you've got to find in Google Images. So you can actually go and search as well. So if I go and search for this, you'll get a drop down menu. And I just zoom out a touch there. And you can see the games that I want the children to play. This might be an example. It isn't the right one at the moment, but you get the idea. If I just zoom, if I just move that down, that's better. Now they do exactly the same thing for the hyperlinks as well. So if I go into go and add a hyperlink somewhere, go and exit this, and over here you can see I've coloured in. I might want to order the colours by group, so I might have a red group for maths, a green group for maths, and you know these nondescript uh, levelling ideas for your maths groups. I can go and add an attachment to these um, these labels. So you can see at the top, if I just move my mouse at the top, you can see I've, I've made a note. You can actually add a Wikipedia article, article that works in exactly the same way as that Google um, that Google search did just a moment, a moment ago. Make a to-do list. If you're working in story setting, then you might get the children to be moving around the classroom from laptop to laptop to laptop, and they each add an item to a to-do list. 
that might be a good idea if you're doing historical investigations, that kind of thing. Um, that is more or less it on the building front. If I just quickly recap, I can go and split the nodes here, all the shells, and I can split them into two again, you know, I can pick them up and I can go and move them around if I were to go and join them onto another uh, another strand, for example. And maybe this, maybe they've got this wrong and it's, uh, you know, it's a cupboard. I'm going to change the colours here, I've got um, a swatch on the right hand side, go and add a link, close this, go and switch that off, and I can go and add hyperlinks to this node here. If I click on a link, I can drop in a delicious tag. So if I'm talking about ICT, I might talk about EdTech. If I search for this and type in EdTech, then I'll get the top 10 links for, top 10 results in Delicious of other people's bookmarks. I'm going to talk about Delicious in a moment and why tags are so good. So I might grab this and pick it up and drop it in the box and apply. And now this new shelf here, you can see it's got a green link icon. That's extremely handy, particularly if you've shown the children how to use uh, Delicious or if you've got a class Delicious link, which Either you've watched this second or first and you're not really sure what a delicious account is, I'm going to explain to you about that in a moment. On the left hand side you can see a very simple control panel, open, save, publish. If I click on publish you can choose whether you want this into rich text format which is a bit like Word, PDF uh, document which is, you know what that is, a printable document, PNG which is a lossless image. So it means you, you can zoom in on these and you can cut it up and use it later. And JPEG is the usual compressed if you're posting it to the web or emailing to people. So you can cut and copy and undo, very simple tools. And then obviously you just saw me a moment ago, you can zoom in, in and zoom out. How do we collaborate? Very easily, just send an email and people will have the link and they can click and join in. Providing they've signed, providing they have signed up to Mind for Two. And exit that. So just drop in here. You might have a whole class worth of um, email addresses, which would be quite interesting to see how it maxes out. I don't know how this maxes out. It might max out at 40 plus email addresses if you're doing something for a whole year group. I'm going to close this, and that is basically it. Your task now is to be in your year groups maybe with an EAL teacher or uh, a specialist and to sign up or one person to sign up to a mind map and for about five minutes sign up go into a computer each um, one person will send all the email addresses so you need your email um, your emails open click on the links that you've been provided make sure you signed in and collaborate away for about five minutes on a topic in your year group so it might be chocolates in year four or it could be uh, survivor in year five enjoy